Hello, this is Political Forum for Wednesday, September 18th. Today we welcome 28th Ward Alderman Jason Urban. Alderman, thank you for coming on thank Political you for having Forum me. today. I'm Delmarie Cobb and you're watching a live interactive program brought to you as a community service by CAN TV. Be sure to tell your friends they can also watch this show online at cantv.org forward slash hotline. We welcome your questions and comments for Alderman Urban by calling us at 312-738-1060. During the next 25 minutes, we'll try to get as many of your calls in as possible while we're on the air. And before we start, we're going to give you the contact information for Alderman Urban. If you didn't get the information the first time, don't worry, we'll show it again. So first, I want to ask you, there's so much going on in um, the city right now, it's hard to prioritize exactly what we should be doing. And, um, and as most people know, you're the alderman of the 28th Ward, but you're also a lawmaker for the city of Chicago, one of 50. Yes. And so today you had a city council meeting and there were a couple of items. Uh, yesterday, we saw one of your colleagues hold a news conference on, with workers yeah. about increasing the minimum wage to $15 by 2021, and it's currently $13. Correct. And how are the people in your community feeling about increasing the minimum wage? We find that a lot of individuals are supportive of the uh, bringing the $15 an hour minimum wage in sooner rather than later, uh, as you as you mentioned earlier, we went to $13 on July 1st. Uh, currently under the ordinance, it's set to increase by CPI uh, for next year. However, uh, with the phase in of 15, the state has it on a different track than we do. However, with the cost of living being higher in Chicago, uh, we feel that it may be necessary to move that timetable forward a little bit, at least for the city of Chicago, so that uh, our residents will be able to have a higher wage based on the cost of living of being a Chicagoan versus someone who may be in downstate Jackson County that doesn't have the same challenges as we do here locally. Now, you have some of your colleagues who think that uh, that's too fast, and they think that raising it to $15 an hour will actually hurt businesses in the community and, and in the city. And what do you say to that in terms of people making more? Well, again, those individuals who will make more will tend to spend their money in the community. Uh, some of our communities don't have the same luxuries as others. And with people having higher disposable incomes, uh, I won't say disposable incomes, but higher incomes, that affords them the opportunity to do more. And generally, when you uh, bring those dollars into uh, our community, uh, those dollars are spent. They're not saved. They're not uh, you know, set aside. They're actually spent because people still need day-to-day uh, -day living expenses and hopefully those those dollars translate to more jobs and more opportunity for people locally and more revenue for the city of Chicago well yeah of course I mean all, all of this I mean we don't look at it from a at least I don't look at it from a revenue lens for us as a, as a city we have to look at it in the lens of what this can do to help up, uplift our communities so uh, the other issue that came up uh, and, and again is along the same track is um, the city's policy on ticketing and towing and booting yes. and how that has hurt the majority of black and brown people yes. and, and putting them in debt and then spiraling down to filing bankruptcy. Correct. Um, tell us now, I think you voted on that today? Yes, we did. Uh, the council did pass the uh, what they're calling, a, what we're calling fines and uh, fee uh, reforms. Essentially, we'll give um, individuals opportunities to enter into payment plans in, in the past cases where they were not able to enter into a payment plan also gives additional time as, as requested for uh, vehicle immobilization uh, you know the the boots that are on people's vehicles again uh, when you're uh, a boot on your car can be a financial emergency because you can't get to work, uh, you can't take your kids to school. A lot of things, because a car really in some people is their most valued asset, uh, where in some communities it's it's a home, but in, in a lot of communities of working class individuals, the car is, is the key to everything, to work, school, a lot of uh, opportunity. So uh, by mobilizing people's vehicles and at the same time, the city was immobilizing people's vehicles if they didn't have the money then 
taking the vehicle and the, the person not getting any credit for their their vehicles. And so people were going through an endless spiral, a cycle, and, and that continues to keep people impoverished. And again, our, our, our hope here is to not uh, let people go that are violating the law, but give them options so that they can find their way out of the situation without necessarily filing for bankruptcy uh, or you know turn it to some other drastic means. And again, even though you may not look at it in terms of generating revenue for the city, um, certainly is helping people. But the other part of that is you've got two, uh, the city clerk says you have two hundred million dollars. Uh, and tickets, sticker tickets that haven't been collected. So overall, it's not just that. The, the overall total uh, that was told to us was that at $1.3 billion in compliance-related penalties that sit out there, um, if, if those items were collected... That's our... That's our debt right now that's the that's the you know and it's actually above that right. but if, if there's an easier path for people to pay without these fines doubling in some cases collection fees being added to them to give them an opportunity to to pay even though we have to admit that someone did not follow the law just giving them an opportunity to make that payment and get themselves right without having to suspend your license without having to immobilize your vehicle because all of those things uh, lead to people putting them deeper in poverty and into bankruptcy, as, it was, as was mentioned earlier. And it's made the city into uh, uh, its own uh, used car dealership because you've sold... Quite, and wait a minute, we don't cars. get, but <laughs> here, you know, the city doesn't see that revenue. Mm -hmm. That revenue goes to a third party for their services that they provide to the city. So the city doesn't get any revenue. The person doesn't get any credit for the sale of their vehicle. So essentially the city is a, is a, is a you know, a willing partner and taking people's vehicles and not really giving them anything for it at the end of the day. Well, good. I'm glad that was that's something that was passed. And was there much opposition to that today? Uh, we did have one individual that, that dissented uh, um, in relation to, they felt that we are not, um, I, would, I would call it uh, creating people's personal responsibility. Uh, actually, one question that I asked related to license suspension. At one point, will we suspend a license because uh, there are some individuals that can be reckless in what they do and you know suspension sh should be an option that should not be the case that there should be the exception uh, however uh, to remove that option away which the ordinance did not do it still allows for it our question was when would it be implemented and that's something that would, would come out with the rules uh, as they're promulgated through the process and people aren't really getting completely off the hook what they're doing is being allowed to correct at, uh, you're not letting on. anyone exactly. go right that's the key you're not letting anyone go you're just giving them an option to you know to make, make amends correct mm -hmm. and make an arrangement that that they can live with mm -hmm. but of course the best option is to not get in the bag right, right. You, yourself but uh, it, all of us it can happen to anyone oh without question <laughs> I, I personally have had a boot on my vehicle wasn't happy about it but I knew I was in the wrong I, I did not pay I did not listen did not did not respond to the notices and woke up one morning to boot on my vehicle and I at that point I had to address right. it otherwise I couldn't move about and it's my a day sinking feeling. oh without question especially <laughs> as you live on the main street people driving past and looking at you like oh my god you got a boot on your car yeah. right so nobody wants to go through that right so you're looking at, you're watching Political Forum, and it's a community service of Can TV. I'm Delmarie Cobb, and this is a live interactive show. And if you have a question for 28th Ward Alderman Jason Irvin, please call us at 312-738-1060. And so I'm going to ask you a couple of other questions, uh, and again, on the money track, okay. uh, since that's where we are. Um, the city is in $838 million worth of debt at this point. Uh, there's a shortfall. Yes. And so there's a lot of proposals on how to generate revenue. And, of course, one of the ones that has been kicked around uh, uh, right now is um, the casino. Mm -hmm. And um, um, a lot of people don't, you know, are not, do not look at that as a progressive issue necessarily. Yes. Uh, it can be a regressive issue because uh, it actually could hurt the people who is meant to help. What is your position on the casino? So casinos, in my opinion, the casinos don't necessarily create wealth. They transfer wealth. Uh, you place your bet, you mm -hmm. win, you lose. You're not creating anything uh, per se. I, I do believe that while tax uh, revenue is important, uh, I think that 
the casino and gaming uh, needs to be targeted toward people that visit our city that that's an added amenity to visiting the city of Chicago that you may indulge in, in gaming if you so choose. Uh, what I would not like to see are, are points where our residents, uh, many of whom are, are struggling as it is, to find that as their, their source of trying to, to hit that one big thing and drive themselves deeper into debt, deeper into uh, bankruptcy, and then that uh, affects families. So while I understand that gaming is here, it's, it's, it's legal, uh, we just do not want folks to be targeted in a sense that it becomes uh, you know, bottom feeding uh, for our, our communities. I know that initially there were five sites that were floated all were in the African American community. Um, however, the feasibility of those sites uh, didn't meet the necessary criteria that was needed to make a uh, make a decent return. And also, the tax structure as it as it looks today doesn't create that opportunity as well. So we have some work to do with the legislature on changing the tax structure, as well as finding a location that we we feel will generate the greatest revenue and opportunity for our residents. And one of the things I I've often talked about is using. If you just look at the zip codes, um, 60628 for an example, mm -hmm. which is Rosalind, um, $20 million a year comes out of Rosalind for the lottery. Lottery sales, yes. Uh, instead of $20 million going into Rosalind. That is uh, correct. And, and just we balance that against what we're gaining, of course, that, that cre therein lies the challenge. So. And so um, your your position is to have it centrally located so that the, the $55 million plus million tourists who come to Chicago. Yes, I mean, the, the object of a casino is to, is to create revenue. And I think that it needs to be in a place where it can create the most revenue. And the studies will, will show that uh, right now we looked at five locations. Uh, if we look at additional locations, those may be less or more than the five that exist. And wherever we can get the greatest synergy, create the most revenue, and have the greatest impact on economics in Chicago, that's where it needs to go. Now, you are, um, you just recently became the chairman of the City Council Black Caucus. Yes. And um, you tell us a, a couple of things before I ask you about that. Uh, the committees that you're now on and how those committees could help you in your role as the chairman of the City Council Black Caucus. Uh, the committees that, I, that, I, that I'm on are, are really important to my role as chairman. I sit on the Finance Committee, uh, the Budget Committee, uh, Public Safety. Uh, those are three key committees that, that look at the challenges and that concern our, our communities. There's no question about public safety and, and the violence that we see and, and the, um, you know, people talk about the uh, lack of corrective action from the police department. All those matters that, that we've been dealing with as a community uh, will come through those committees. Uh, I also, you know, of course, we all, we all sit on the rules committee and finally workforce development, which is where a lot of our um, you know, issues regarding uh, wage and workforce issues are, are dealt with. So these are real key committees that affect the outcomes of things that are happening in our community. And the, the new committee that was formed, which is Oversight and Equity? Oversight and equity. That, that committee, I'm not on that committee. You're not on that committee? No, I'm not okay. on that committee. Uh, there are a number of my colleagues that are, are on that committee. But again, we, we do tend to sit in on uh, on meetings uh, of our respect, even if you're not on the committee, depending on the subject matter and its impact on our wards and on the, on the city as a whole. So we have to, you know, judge those, those matters and participate in those discussions as well. So then what are some of your uh, goals as the chairman of the City Council Black Caucus? Uh, in this term, our, our primary goal is dealing with representation. Uh, this is the time where we'll be, uh, the census will be conducted and we'll be charged with, uh, you know, redistricting. Um, while we've had, we've had some challenges in our communities, we do not want to lose any political capital uh, that we have. We currently have 18 wards uh, that are, that are African-American majority wards. And uh, when we leave the process, we, we, we don't want to lose anything. Currently, there are 20 African-American aldermen uh, in the city council. And again, uh, we have a substantial block and, and we want to maintain our, our voting strength and our voting power and our voice for our community. And I don't, and I think what many people don't understand, they think of wars as being geographical versus population driven. Yes. And 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 we've already lost the second ward in the black community. That is correct. Uh, completely. Correct. And it was one of the most historic correct. Uh, war, uh, black wards in the city of Chicago. Yes, yes. So given that, 
and the fact that African Americans are leaving in droves uh, the city, the wards are going to have to be drawn north. To well, it just depends people. because there are there are wards where African Americans live. For example, the 25th ward that abuts me on on the eastern end. Uh, there are communities of African Americans that live in the 25th ward that quite possibly could end up in this third ward or the 28th ward in a remapping as we as we work to create. Um, map and, and wars that are protected under the Voting Rights Act. So, you know, there will be some shifting uh, to say, uh, but however, we just also need to main, work to maintain it. If we can draw the wards as needed, then that's what the law uh, demands that we do, and we want to make sure that that's enforced. So recently you had um, a news conference, I believe, with the mayor regarding the uh, Vision Zero Traffic yes. Safety Plan. Yes. So tell us a little bit about that. I mean, I, I was surprised to learn that um, the West Side had more fatalities uh, uh, than any other. Yes, uh, Madison, uh, outside of downtown, uh, Madison had the most pedestrian fatalities of, of any uh, roadway uh, in the city of Chicago outside of the Central Business District. Uh, and that was actually uh, daunting when it, when it first came to me. But I had to personally think back. I actually mm -hmm. lost a, a, a guy that I knew was hit crossing the street on Madison, leaving an establishment. And, and that, you know, kind of brought it in clear to me that, you know what, this really is an issue. And the issue really comes down to speed. Um, you know, it, it's, I know we like to move, get to where we're going in a quick manner, uh, but we have to slow down because as the speed increases, uh, the likelihood of someone dying in a, in a pedestrian versus a vehicle incident grows up exponentially. So parts of Madison and in, in my community are as wide as the Eisenhower and people do tend to pick up speed in those areas. So the goal really is to help slow people down. And also we've uh, had some pedestrian safety uh, islands installed across the street so that while, so especially for our seniors and our children that can't get across the street in one fell swoop, that that island in the middle gives them an opportunity to, to stop a, a safe place and then collect themselves and then go across potentially at, at the next meeting so that they're not stuck out in the middle of the street unprotected. And so we'll see, you'll see several of those, or at least right now, six uh, counting through that area. Uh, plan is to install more, again, to protect seniors, protect children, to, to make their experience uh, getting across the street a lot safer. And we have a caller um, for you. Uh, caller? You have a question for Alderman uh, Irvin? Hello. 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 Yeah, I have a question for the Alderman. So I am here in a discussion about reparations. Uh, could you, like, I guess, firstly explain a little bit about what that would entail? And I also want to know whether or not you think that's actually going to happen. Um, you said, do, do we think that it's going to happen? Is that, was that the last end of your question? Yes. So reparations, we talk about reparations, uh, we talk about, uh, we want to say repair, and uh, we go back to this, this issue of equity. Um, I, I think that, you know, what uh, Alderman Sawyer's ordinance, I actually one of the chief co-sponsors of the ordinance, talks about uh, doing is understanding how the status of our, our community has been impacted uh, by a certain attitude, certain uh, actions that have been taken toward our community, and what can be done to repair uh, those uh, those actions. No, I don't think that we're necessarily looking for a, a check per se, but we're looking for investment that will help bring the level of equity to our community that we're seeing in other communities. So how that will, will take shape will be a part of that conversation. Um, and what, uh, how we can expect or look at the city of Chicago and what it can do to help its, its citizens who in many cases have had government sanctioned uh, activity that has negatively impacted our community uh, economically, uh, spiritually, in a number of fashions. And how do we uh, make amends uh, as, a, as a city toward our, our populace that has been injured by these types of activities that have been have been allowed to exist under the the structure of government here in the city of Chicago. 
And one of the things you're starting a commission, correct? Yes, the, the, the legislation the that, that has been uh, brought forth asked for uh, specifically the commission to study uh, that issue to uh, educate, understand, and Alderman Sawyer and his committee to actually go out into the community and, and hear from individuals their stories about you know how they have been harmed or set back based upon the action or inaction of government and and how we can uh how we can make how how government can make amends to our community for what has been done at its at its direction or lack of lack of direction or lack of action so the, all of the all of these conversations i think will 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 culminate in our opinion to something that we can turn into an action plan to help our our young people to make amends for our, our as government not uh, really doing right necessarily by African Americans here in the city of Chicago and nationally. And what will that committee, uh, the makeup of that committee be? The committee is, is made up of members of the city council, uh, made up of appointees uh, uh, from the mayor and also individuals from our, 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 our respective communities. So uh, the number, if I'm not mistaken, is 15 individuals. And again, uh, we as a, as a group um, just under a people need to be educated because if you ask 10 people mm -hmm. about reparations you'll get 10 different definitions and answers so we really need to a educate people help people understand what it is what it isn't and then do the work of how do we correct those uh, inequities and you had um, speaking of that and and how all of this works together uh, the mayor is going to different communities yes uh, talking about the budget yes and getting ideas from community members on ideas for generating money Correct. beyond the ones that are already, already being on the talked table about. right so what um, can you tell me about I guess the first one do you were you in attendance no I and here's one challenge and we've brought this up uh, there have been four meetings there's four meetings scheduled uh, for this. Uh, the biggest challenge is not one of those meetings have been in what, what you and I would consider to be the African American right. community. However, you know, we make up substantial population or impacted by this. I do believe that they will be holding additional meetings. And I saw extra ones that's just been added. Exactly. And, and to that point, because we, we did uh, make a statement on that issue because, um, you know, we pay taxes too, and, and we will we will have to deal with whatever is is brought forth and we by have that. Ideas. Yes, and <laughs> we not only have we have great ideas, right? And uh, and we also we also have been um, uh, have had some inadequacies uh, from government, and and I think that our elected leadership needs to know about that. And part of this is not just a revenue session, but this is also about. How do we set our policy and, and, and how we're spending our money? What services are we, we looking uh, to enhance? What services do we feel that we don't continue to need? And, and I'm always told I want you to give us the best services as possible, but don't increase my taxes. And so we have to help people understand those two, two, two things don't necessarily go together. But again, we need to hear that conversation and all we're going to do that is in, in, in our community where, where people feel comfortable having that conversation in a community institution. So quickly I wanted to ask you how is uh, automatic prerogative going since it's been it was a, eliminated by executive order to some degree and you've gone through the summer mm -hmm. and I know that during the summer a lot of permitting requests are, are made. Are those are, are aldermen handling those still or? Depends on the types. Um, one thing that I think the downside of this is, it, it, it goes back to this, if you've been in a, in a situation and um, sometimes people are saying, well, we don't, in the administration side, well, you don't have to listen to those guys anymore. However, uh, that impacts us in how we get service. And so, you know, our point and in, in, in when we have an opportunity uh, to meet is to talk about, you know, while we may be talking about prerogative about things that people have done wrong, there's so much that's going on that aldermen do that is right in, on the side of their community. And to discard or discount that conversation does not do the community a service, therefore doesn't do the city a good service. And so we want to have those conversations. We understand that there, there may have been some bad actors in, in that regard. That doesn't mean you throw the baby out with the bathwater. And so I wanted to also make sure that I tell the audience, again, if you want to reach the alderman, 
Here is the contact information for Alderman Jason Irvin. Um, uh, he is available for you to talk to him as a constituent and as a lawmaker. I'm yes, sure. uh, yes. We, we don't turn anybody away. Uh, we, we have uh, open office hours generally on, uh, on Monday evenings where, where we, we generally get people from all over the city, especially in the expanded role as chair of the Black, Black Caucus. We get, you know, people from all over the city with uh, issues and things that we have to work and deal with, and so and we welcome those. And so we only have a few seconds left. Mm -hmm. if, is, is there anything else you would like to add? Uh, basically, I, I, I count it as, a, as, a, as an honor to uh, work on behalf of uh, African Americans in the city of Chicago. I'm thankful that my colleagues uh, chose me uh, to lead this effort. Uh, we have a lot of work to do in our city and a lot of work to do in our community. And uh, we, we definitely look forward to the challenge and we'll continue to work at that. And thank you, Alderman Irving, for thank joining you for us tonight. Us. And thank you, viewers, for watching Political Forum. And remember that you can see this uh, online at um, cantv.org forward slash hotline. And this is Delmarie Cobb, and I appreciate you watching us.